I will now move to Africa. And Tony is an exceptional entrepreneur and is the founder and the CEO of an energy conglomerate. So Tony, we look very much forward to hearing your thoughts on why the SDGs are good for business. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rod Larson, uh, for hosting us and being a great moderator. Uh, to David, who's unfortunately had to leave, but he is creating an amazing bridge between the private sector and the UN today. To your excellencies on the table, uh, my big brother from Colombia and my sister from Spain, and here we are in Africa. That's what the United Nations is all about. But to anyone who knows the Delta, you would agree it's an intriguing place. It's full of aquaculture. It's crisscrossed with rivers and tributaries. It's a magnificent intertwining of nature. And it leaves anyone who is a lover of creation breathless. I come from such a place. It's the largest delta in the world. It's a mangrove forest bang in the midst of the tropics. It's got rainforests that bow, uh, that bond, bow, bonder, uh, border the peripheries of this delta. And it gives the entire region a very rich collection of animals, wildlife, aquatic culture, and all sorts of things. It's in this region that I first came across what, would call, what we call the mudfish, a fish that walks on mud. And as a child, I was absolutely amazed. It's in this same region that I saw fish fly. We traverse the place in speedboats, and we would see fish fly out of the water and just fish that loved to jump. But in our local culture, we call them flying fish. And they did more or less what dolphins do in your culture. But as a child, these are powerful images that we remember. And it caused me to look forward every year three times, four times, to go back to this little town in the middle of the Niger Delta called Abonima, where I come from. And every Christmas would have what we would call cultural displays of masquerades coming out and sharing and showing the rich heritage of what my people are all about. A story with fish, because we're from the Niger Delta, and water is extremely important to us. And it was the first time, long before I saw in reality what you would call swordfishes, sawfishes, sharks, stingrays, that I saw in our culture, in carvings that the masquerades would display of all these great fish that we could fish locally in our neighborhood. Today, all of that is gone. I can't remember any child from the Niger Delta today ever seeing or knowing what a stingray is or sharks or swordfishes, or sawfishes, they've all gone. And what took it away? It was a shattering of peace. It was a degradation of the environment when the guns came, when the bombs came, when there was an inequality in life between those who have and those who, do, who don't have, when greed began to play a very, very major role, and when people could no longer speak and fight for what was right. And those who knew what to do didn't do it and walked away. The very culture that we all grew up with as children that have made us today sit at places like this talking to you has been denied to an entire generation of young people today because they don't have that same opportunity. Why? Because they've grown up knowing only about environment degradation, ecology, war, bombs, pipelines. The absence of peace in itself ensures that nothing is certain about the future. And the future is already pretty difficult to think about. And when you then have no peace, then the strongest force, which is hope, that keeps you going for tomorrow is taken away. And you see, that's why the SDGs as a concept for me, it's a critical and very powerful tool. Because what it does is that it gives hope that if the world can come together to address some of these things, then children today can, tomorrow, become great leaders, leaders of the continent, leaders of companies, 
leaders of businesses, leaders in whatever it is that they choose to do. I'm not sure I can find anyone who can argue against peace, against what it means. I don't know anyone who doesn't want to see hunger eradicated or poverty gone. Who will argue against the importance of education, of equality for women, for men, for minorities? Who will argue that climate change is not important one way or the other? I'm yet to meet anyone in any culture that is comfortable with refugees crossing their borders, internally displaced people, moving from what they know is home to leave without a state, without a place. I haven't yet met one person who says, this is good, we like it, let's leave it that way. I'm not sure I've also met people who think that trafficking of children it really makes sense. That's excellent for business. It's very, very good in a corporate world. Who would promote that women should be used for sex, trafficking them across borders at night, illicit monies that my ambassador talk, talked about and believes that that is good? So who would argue that any of these 17 goals that have been set are not good for business? Who would argue that it's not good for life? Who would argue that it's not good for the world? Two years ago, when we were here, as business trying to work with the United Nations to form some common language between what we know as business language and what multilateral agencies know as government speak, and we're trying to find some common language, what I felt and what I sensed then coming here was that there was a huge mistrust between governments, between businesses, and civil society. Mistrust was in the air. I walked into this place and everyone was looking and saying, what are they doing here? What's the private sector looking for in this hallowed grounds of government speak? Mistrust was heavy then. But well, we sat down with Paloma and the SDG Fund, and we began to craft a framework of how the private sector and government can work together. We battered, we argued, we collaborated, and we came up with a framework and we submitted that framework. Last year when I came, the entire place was full of world leaders doing some incredible thing. As David said, they came together and all agreed on one thing, and they signed it off. We submitted our framework, and the air was a bit different. It wasn't so much about mistrust now, but it was about, you know what, we don't have a choice. What do we do? These strange people call the private sector, we actually need them, so can they come in and let's talk? And that was the air, there was a change, it started to change. And this year it's different. All of a sudden I see private sector having a voice and a louder voice in the room. But more importantly, I hear the talk coming from the government and it's different. I hear the talk from the multilateral agencies and it's different. It speaks a lot more about what the private sector can do and why it's important. And governments, just like Colombia, speaking and giving examples of how the private sector is working in their communities to ensure peace, to ensure equality, to do things that are really good for the government, for the country, for the people at all levels. And that's what it's about. It's about collaboration. It's about both sides of the table speaking to the same thing and not speaking against each other, not speaking at each other, but sitting down and working together. And that's why the project that the SDG Fund and Sahara Group is working on in Nigeria called Food Africa is very important. It was one thing to develop a framework. And we've worked with governments and we've seen many frameworks develop, many documents develop that just sit on shelves. The best ideas are useless if it's not implemented. And so we sat down and decided to implement something, something that will show a collaboration between the private sector, between unilateral agencies of the UN, UNDP, ILO, FAO, and the SDG Fund. And we brought other private sectors and we brought governments. We brought the Nigerian government at the presidential level. We brought the Kaduna state government at the state level. We brought local governments at the local government level and cooperatives of farmers all together, sitting down to develop an idea that will deal 
with the goals that the SDGs have set out. It's all about collaboration. And Food Africa intends to do that. I think the SDGs are just a perfect tool for business, a perfect tool for governments, a perfect tool for people who don't have a voice to get a voice, for people to do good. And I don't know any business that will tell you that doing good is bad for business. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, what I say is, was a fascinating um, expose. And apparently, you're not only a very successful entrepreneur, you're also a very talented poet, bringing us, <laughs> bringing us into worlds of beauty and hope. So thank you once again. Wonderful.